Hello and thank you for watching this video. I'm Arjan Schaaf, a senior DynamoDB specialist solutions architect here at AWS. Today we're going to talk about the well-architected lens for Amazon DynamoDB, focusing on the operational excellence pillar. The operational excellence pillar focuses on running and monitoring systems to deliver business value and continually improve processes and procedures. Key topics include automating changes, responding to events, and defining standards to manage daily operations. When we came up with a list of topics for the operational excellence pillar, we defined the following design considerations. Use infrastructure as code wherever possible. AWS CloudFormation, AWS CDK, or Terraform enable you to manage consistent environment configuration. Use AWS Config to validate all relevant DynamoDB best practices. Use AWS CloudWatch event rules when AWS Config events occur. Make use of the Amazon CloudWatch contributor insights for DynamoDB. Also configure your own applications to log critical information on topics like DynamoDB connectivity response times and errors. Create CloudWatch dashboards and alarms to key metrics and application logs. Tag your tables, both for identification and cost accounting. Create playbooks to enable consistent and prompt responses to fill your scenarios by documenting the investigation process. Playbooks are the predefined steps to perform to identify an issue. The results from any process step are used to determine the next steps to take until the issue is identified or escalated. Let's dive deep into change management first. Changes to your infrastructure should be made using automation. The changes that are needed to manage include changes to the automation, which can then be tracked and reviewed. The great benefit of using infrastructure as code is it being a single source of truth for your complete deployment. Infrastructure can easily be replicated or redeployed across different environments and you keep control of both versioning your infrastructure and your applications together. Using CloudFormation, stacks are created that provide a collection of AWS resources as a single unit. CloudFormation will manage both the creation and the lead of these resources as needed. To further organize and structure your resource management, CloudFormation offers the concept of nested stacks. The AWS Cloud Development Kit or AWS CDK is an open source software development framework to model and provision your cloud application resources using familiar programming languages. And most important, Part is that you are able to build your abstractions and components of the infrastructure and applications you need. We provide many same default values, so there is no need to read a lot of documentation, but you can just start quickly and save. Of course, many of these default values can be adjusted to your need. With CDK, we also see a paradigm shift how we provision multiple environments. Previously with CloudFormation, we used one template with parameters for multiple environments like development and test. With CDK, we have a shift where we have multiple templates that are generated for each environment, which end up in different stacks. This decoupling helps us to contain and maintain differences between environments, like having less expensive resources, in a development environment. Let's continue with how to monitor your DynamoDB tables. You can define your compliance rules and standards using managed and custom rules in AWS Config and define proactive measures such as triggering a notification or remediating an issue. Here is a reference architecture for AWS Config. AWS Config checks for compliance rules when a table is created or modified. 
When a non-compliance event is detected, Event Bridge can either trigger a Lambda function to remediate an issue or send a notification to an SNS topic. CloudWatch contributor insights for Amazon DynamoDB logs frequently accessed keys and throttled keys. Many customers ask us for heat maps, but this gives you the real data. Which key was most frequently accessed? It can help you find application bugs previously undetected. One note I would like to add, using CloudWatch contributor insights brings additional cost that can be significant on very active tables. An approach often used is to enable CloudWatch contributor insights only while troubleshooting and disabling again when troubleshooting is finished. You can use Amazon CloudWatch metrics published by DynamoDB to help you understand the interaction of your evolving workload with DynamoDB in the context of your data model. The metrics are separated into the following based on the resource level. Metrics that are provided out of the box with DynamoDB, metrics that require computation via metric math, and finally, metrics that must be self published to Amazon CloudWatch using a custom AWS Lambda function. We will not be discussing each and every individual metric in this video, but let's touch on some of them to give a general impression of what's available and possible. First, we have the metrics available on an account and region level. Account proficient read capacity utilization, for example, which can be used to identify when a service quota increase could be desirable. Next, we have the metrics available to every table in Global Secondary Index. These can indicate a capacity configuration issue or potentially even an application issue. Some of these metrics require metric path. For example, to determine if a table or GSI suffers from sustained read and write throttling. Others are available out of the box, like the transaction conflict metrics that can signal sustained transactional conflicts. Other metrics are only relevant to either proficient capacity mode or on-demand capacity mode. The metrics relevant to proficient capacity mode focus on the minimum and maximum value set in the outer scaling configuration. On demand capacity mode, where you can track a different metric to determine if consumption is getting close to the table or GSI limit. Amazon DynamoDB Accelerator, or DAX, is a fully managed, highly available in-memory cache for Amazon DynamoDB that delivers up to 10 times performance improvement, from milliseconds to microseconds, even at millions of requests per second. And DAX comes with its own set of metrics. These metrics can be crucial to determine if you are effectively and efficiently using DAX in combination with DynamoDB. And finally, in case of global tables, our fully managed multi-region and multi-active service, we want to keep visibility on the replication latency because elevated replication latency between regions can indicate an issue. Before we dive into the topic of surface quotas, a couple of points to be aware of. Be aware of the default quota and potential quota increase requests that can impact your workload. Be aware, if you use multiple accounts and regions, that you have to manage quotas across them and request the appropriate quotas in all the environments your production workloads are deployed. Some of these surface quotas can't be changed. Take those into consideration when architecting your workload. Monitor the relevant quotas so you can manage them appropriately for further growth. And consider automating the management of some of these quotas. Using the Service Quota APIs, you can automate quota increase requests, for example. Service Quotas is an AWS service that helps you manage your quotas for over 100 AWS services from one location. Along with looking up the quota values, you can also request and track quota increases from the Service Quota console or via the AWS SDK. AWS Trusted Advisor offers a Service Quota check that displays your usage and quotas for some aspects of these services. So let's look at these Service Quota relevant 
to DynamoDB tables. We have an initial quota of 2500 tables per account per region. There are some constraints on how often you can switch between capacity modes within 24 hours. This can be done once, unless you switch a proficient mode table to on-demand mode and you switch back to proficient mode in the same 24 hour period. On throughput, the quotas are as follows. By default, a table can have up to 40,000 read and 40,000 write units. On the account level, we just have a throughput limit for proficient capacity mode, the default being 80,000. And proficient capacity mode will not scale back to a lower amount than one read and one write capacity unit per table or global secondary index. With DynamoDB global tables, we have similar quotas for read and write capacity. If you're adding a replica or replicas to one destination region, within a 24 hour period with a combined total greater than 10 terabyte, you must request a service quota increase for your add replica data backfill quota. I want to briefly touch on the import and export capabilities of DynamoDB. Exporting to S3 is a native feature of DynamoDB, so it works at any scale without having to manage servers and clusters and to allow you to export data across AWS regions and accounts to any point in time in the last 35 days at a per second granularity. Plus, it does not affect the read capability or the availability of your tables. Import to S3 is a feature launched in 2022 that makes it easier for you to import data from Amazon Simple Storage Servers, Amazon S3, into new DynamoDB tables. This is a fully managed feature that does not require writing code or managing infrastructure. And for the final topic, we cover in the Operational Excellence Pillar, Incident Response. Create relevant playbooks or even automate some of them. Playbooks provide adequate skilled team members who are unfamiliar with the workload, the guidance necessary to gather applicable information, identify potential sources of failure, isolate faults, and determine root cause of issues. Thereby, you will be able to reduce the negative impact on your business and operations. Thank you for watching this video on the well-architected lens for Amazon DynamoDB, focusing on the operational excellence pillar. I encourage you to watch all the videos in this series and dive deep into all the different pillars for the well-architected review for Amazon DynamoDB.